Yeah, we're smiling, right? We just notice it. <laughs> Hello, and uh, welcome again to our uh, Sunday morning uh, round table or table or whatever it is where. Uh, yes. Sister is here, uh, Deacon John is here, and Father Mario is here. I'm sure that you've been aware of the news that uh, broke uh, yesterday afternoon, that would be Saturday afternoon, that we're now allowed to have uh, participating in the celebration of the Eucharist, 25% uh, of your parish community. Let me say right at the beginning that all sounds very wonderful and very uh, simple. And if we have a large church, you, those of you who are familiar with St. Mary's know it's large, but how large is it? For the present, and we will give more instruction with this as we work it out during the um, coming week, uh, we will still continue to live stream the 4.30 on Saturday afternoon Mass and the 10.30 on Sunday morning Mass. Regardless of what else happens, or in addition to whatever else happens, that streaming will take place. And the obligation for those who sense that we are obligated to go to Mass on Sunday, that obligation again has been lifted and remains lifted for as long as the pandemic uh, affects seriously our communities, which it does. And I know that this is something that, well, we're watching on the news, another incident where many people are gathered together, pushing, they're not wearing masks, they're certainly not keeping the six foot distance, and the next day they wake up and they're not sick, or two days later they're not sick. Not paying attention, perhaps, to what we have heard, that it takes almost two weeks for this to uh, occur. So we're not sure just how this will play out. That's another story, but just as an observation. Um, the concern that both the bishops and the government have had is what we would call the common good. And this remains a very important thing to think about. And common good is always matched by common sense. And those are two qualities that sometimes are important to keep in balance and that sometimes, given the circumstances that happen in life, are not so easy always to keep in mind. So I just start with that. Not that I have a lot of common sense, I don't, but nevertheless, um, we try to, <laughs> as best we can, uh, kind, of, kind of play that out. What we will do, beginning this coming uh, Saturday, is to have our traditional uh, Saturday evening outdoor mass. As you know, we have done this for many years and it's been very popular with some. And uh, of course, we will be doing this with little different uh, emphasis uh, this year. When you come, as I mentioned in the uh, announcements today, when you come, we will have folks here who will guide you both as to where to place your automobile your bicycle, your motorcycle, whatever it is that you bring, where to place that to keep it safely there and to keep you safe. Now, here are the, and I love rules, and I know your constitutional right is to do whatever you want, but listen, common sense, common good. Bring your own chair. We will not have chairs here available for you to sit in. So you need to bring your own chair, or if you like sitting on the blacktop, you certainly have the spot there to do that. Or if you bring your own blanket and want to put that on the spot, you can do that. But I mean, what, or you can just stand in your spot if you can stand for the length of one of our homilies. Well, good luck on that. All right. So uh, your own chair. You will be asked to wear the mask. I know this is a, a new thing for many. So uh, bring your own mask. I'm sure you all have them by now. And um, as my mother used to say when we were getting ready to go to church, did you use the bathroom yet? <laughs> well, we're going to have to ask you to consider that as you come to this mass. We are going to not uh, open the church, therefore, the facilities will not be available. Now, 
as a side note, I've looked around and I noticed there are a lot of trees and bushes <laughs> and if you need to get it, there it is. I make kind of a little light of this, but it is certainly uh, some serious considerations. So if you come, uh, bring your own chair, bring your own mask, uh, be ready to, you know, mass always goes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, so that will happen. Now, if you come to that mass, you will be able to receive uh, communion. There will be communion stations, and we will give instructions exactly on how to receive the sacrament at that time. It will be during the uh, traditional uh, communion time. By the way, this Mass will not be uh, streamed, so um, the two stream Masses will remain 4.30 and uh, 10. Now those are some of the, uh, we, we hope, and of course, if it rains. Now I uh, posed that to some of the staff and he said, well, if it rains, they can bring their umbrella. All right, if you want to sit during Mass holding your umbrella, uh, Good luck. But uh, common sense says that is, if it's raining, we, we won't be holding the Mass. If it's drizzling, we might. If it's snowing, we definitely will be holding the Mass because <laughs> I love snow and we can let that pile up. Uh, again, good sense says that we can have a wonderful celebration together, but um, Let's use the wisdom that God has given all of us and that sometimes we, uh, I think a lot of times we use, okay? Now, as far as the announcement yesterday that you can celebrate Mass within your church building if you, uh, with a 25% of the population coming, this is difficult for us to work out. As you know, those of you who come to our Sunday Masses, sometimes they're not too filled. And that may be easier to decide on 25. Uh, other Masses are more regularly attended by folks, and that becomes truly a difficulty. We will continue to kind of try to work this one out. And uh, whether or not, though, by next week we're going to go back to the regular Sunday schedule of 8, 10, and 12, uh, I'm not sure, okay? We will do the 10, 10. Possibility of an outside Mass on that day? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that we have an answer on that one. So as you can see, and I'm kind of trying to be honest with you, we're in the process of what is doing best what is healthiest and wholesome for the parish Mary, uh, community here at St. Mary's. I know there are other churches doing other things, and if you carefully listen to what the bishop said, he said it's up to the pastors to make the decision of what they want to do. I call that passing the buck, because <laughs> now we all have to uh, uh, kind of make decisions. And I'm happy to make those that are the best for all of us uh, concerned. I think that perhaps within the next few weeks that percentage may increase and uh, we are certainly aware that it is not the political world, it is not the religious world, but it is listening to the advice of those who are in medicine that perhaps we can best serve one another. Not that they're perfect, not that they know the answers, but that they are certainly helping us to be concerned for one another. So, um, I don't know, would you add anything to that? that what well, there is someone who is asking a question. Uh, maybe they can join. Yeah, um, someone's asking, uh, why do we need to wear a mask uh, if we're outside for the mask? And it's directed. And, and it is a good question. And I would uh, think if you're the sixth, see, here's we like rules, told what to do or not to do, okay? My sense that my mother always used to say to me at times is, use your head. So what, <laughs> more than a coat, hat rack, and more than pouncing against the wall. But 
if it's a nice day, the wind is not blowing, you know, all conditions, as the Deacon John always likes to point out, things have to be perfect. If everything were perfect, well, then maybe you didn't need the mask. But when you come up to communion, you definitely will need it, at least for the next few weeks. That much I have to hold, hold us to for the safety, both of the, of the person giving it to you and for the safety of everyone else that, that, that's around. That yeah. Just walking back and forth to your car, too, you may pass closer than six feet of, from someone else, so that would be another reason. Yeah. So those would be, I'm sure that we'd, we don't have a satisfactory answer for all of these things, but um, I, I came across this uh, little column in the uh, magazine this week, titled, Should Churches Reopen? As churches debate, this is the author, and the author here is T.N. Wright, who is a rather respected scripture scholar uh, in the uh, Christian tradition, says this, as churches debate whether to allow gatherings, I find myself caught between two viewpoints, both of which seem right. I understand that we need to be responsible and scrupulously careful. Church buildings are not an escape from the world, but a bridgehead into it. I am appalled by reports of would-be devout people ignoring safety regulations because they believe that as Christians they are protected against disease. But equally, by temporarily abolishing corporate worship and joining with others only on live streamed services, Christians may seem to be agreeing that we are just like-minded individuals pursuing an archaic hobby, hobby. Part of the answer to this conundrum might be to recognize the present as a time of exile. We find ourselves quote scripture, by the waters of Babylon, confused and grieving for the loss of our normal life. We must, as Jeremiah said, settle down into this regime and seek the welfare of the city where we are. But let's not pretend it's where we want to be. So I think he kind of illustrates the, the dilemma that we're in. I don't, but again, I don't know if any of you have further helps or suggestions here. I, I think the dilemma, as pretty much Father said, is that Mass is to bring us together to create a sense of unity and community, and we're spending our energy now trying to figure out how to remain separate. And so it just kind of goes against what we're really doing as people gathering to celebrate the presence of Jesus in our midst. And so, in some ways, it seems futile. Why are we doing all this, putting all this energy into deciding how we can stay separate? So that's kind of a mixed feeling that I have about all this. Uh, however, you know, we do know that if it's possible for us to come together in any way at all, it's better than nothing, maybe. So I guess we have to kind of stay in this this liminal space until we can get, you know, come together again in a in a proper way. Um, I was wondering, Father, if it's a good time to share how people will be coming to communion? Well, I, we would expect it to receive communion as the way that has been recommended for many, many years um, by receive, making your hands a little table to receive the Lord. I mean, that, that's been the recommended pre uh, process goes back many, 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 many centuries. Talk a little bit, uh, perhaps this week, those of you who like the uh, scripture thing, and as uh, because next Sunday we will be celebrating the Feast of Corpus Christi, or the Feast of the Body and Blood, Precious Body and Blood of Jesus, uh, a little bit how that those customs developed and maybe some of the needs uh, to uh, refocus on. But uh, as Sister's saying, we are really, saying, and I don't think too many have really been doing this, we're not asked to place the tongue, the uh, tongue, 
to place the host and the tongue. Probably should keep my tongue in, but um, so when you go to communion, think about that. Your hands like this, the hand you place the host in your mouth with, of course, is underneath, and the other hand becomes the table. The table of the Lord that is celebrated here is extended to you and then to you. So there's a kind of nice symbolism there that uh, might be looked at. And just as an aside before I pass this back, uh, there was some notice about churches being opened and closed. Those of you who know, St. Mary's has never been closed from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the evening throughout the pandemic. And if you want to come and pray quietly, please do so. Please sanitize your hands. There are now at all the entrances of the church sanitizing material. And um, be careful where you sit. And um, if you have a cold, please. Okay, so just a reminder. The unusual thing is that when you come for communion, our directors, Madaisi, say you must, for the time being, wear your mask. So you come up, you receive the body of Christ in your hands with your mask on. And then, carefully holding the Eucharist, you would take, remove your mask after you move away from the minister. Um, you would remove your mask and consume the host. But that would be, um, it kind of seems so unusual to come up to communion with your mouth covered, but that is the directive for now. So that's what we have to, we have to go by. Yes, consume the host and then put your mask right back on again. Deacon John likes to pull the mask down over him. Yep. <laughs> Another advice is undo one ear and just move it over receive and then put it back on. So there are different ways that if you don't want to take it all off and put it all on because you have too much hair, uh, well, or it affects your hearing, hearing aid, aids, or it affects your glasses. <laughs> glasses. I know these are all uh, kind of practical problems. I don't mean to make light of them, but mm -hmm. again, we hope that good sense enables us all to both receive the sacrament, but also to stay safe uh, for ourselves and for others. See, sometimes in our world, we think of me, and that's important, but we also need to think of we, and that's equally important. Yes, Father, even after Mass, I think um, it's not a time for social hour. We're supposed to be still maintaining the mm -hmm. uh, social distancing, keep our masks on, going back to the car. Um, and so it's not a time for everybody to get together and start talking to one another again, which we'd love to do, but uh, we still need to be safe. And just in case you're worried, we will take up a collection. That's right. Maybe two. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> now on that score, I have been asked by the uh, folks at Catholic Charities to remind you, to remind us, that the charity drive officially ends at the end of this month, <clears throat> that they are approximately 72%, I think, of the goal. But if for any reason you have not been able to or have forgotten to make a contribution to the Catholic Charities Appeal this year, may I encourage you to do so. The work of the charities has significantly increased in this time rather than decreased. And so the services that are being able to be given have continued thanks to the generosity of so many. So I know many, many of you uh, have already made contributions either through St. Mary's or directly uh, to the charity's office. But if for any reason you may be hesitant to do that, and please know the money goes to Catholic Charities, not to the Diocese of Buffalo, for those of you who still, and I appreciate there's a concern in that regard, um, is, is not the case, okay? So again, I do make that little pitch. And if you're a young person who got your little charity box, uh, they can still be turned in as well up to the end of the month. So please, if you do come to Mass, either Saturday evening or to a weekday Mass, 
consider bringing those boxes in because every little bit helps. Please bring them in because Sister has nothing else to do and she'd be glad to count <laughs> oh, all the pennies and nickels that are there. Oh, Father. <laughs> Father, we actually have a question, but it was answered uh, online. They were asking, what is the, um, the black thing behind the amble? And from here, it's the hand sanitizers. And what's really nice about them is you put your hand under them, you don't have to touch them, so we're not spreading any disease. And we have another question. Um, will Eucharistic ministers be utilized for distribution? I think I'm, right I'm not sure what the question is. During I, the Mass. If we need the Eucharistic ministers to possibly. help us uh, communion. If you should be at Mass and you are a Eucharistic minister, check with us beforehand and we'll see whether or not. We could, yes. I say yes, but maybe if we have 20 Eucharistic ministers, then we really only need 10. No, I'm just yeah. saying, but yeah. uh, we'll, we'll kind of check that out as need. But thank you for the offer to, to do that, mm -hmm. if you're willing. I, I realize <clears throat> some of you, for various reasons, want to keep the distance, do not want to uh, participate in the sacrament aspect, and that's perfectly all right at this time, because... Um, yeah, God doesn't want you to get sick just to receive communion. We make the rules, <laughs> and uh, so I guess we can break them. Yeah, that's right. So, now, for, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. This is for weekday masses. As Father said, we are, you can come, and we have the pews marked that are six feet apart. So if you do come for a weekday mass, uh, just don't touch anything. You don't have to touch. There's hand sanitizer when you walk in. T or go to any pew that has a green marker on it. We will be asking you afterwards, there's going to be a pail of water, and we'll have gloves for you to wash the pew. Until we figure out all the sanitizing things, we will ask you to um, sanitize your own area before you leave, until we figure things out, okay? So we want to make sure things are clean. And if you take the same pew each day, that would be helpful as well. But just to know that uh, the pews are marked throughout the church for, for tomorrow, for the noon mass. Okay. Yeah, speaking of sanitizers, our church is uh, in every door. Once you enter, there are sanitizers so we, where we can use it. And you can also bring your own sanitizers when you come in uh, for any uh, health uh, things that you might need. And as Father Paul is always recognize his mom's advice, if you take a shower or a, a restroom before you go to church, my mom always used to say also, did you go take a shower? So the same thing. So maybe when, maybe during this time, maybe more than two months already that we've been using online masses, maybe you'll get to use it. So please don't come with your right hand with your cup of tea and your cupcakes on your left. And don't come in also with your pajamas. So remember that we are in the church, we're not in the house anymore. So that's the one thing. And then I think one of the things that I also have to learn uh, as a parochial biker, learning things as a new thing, Father Paul has mentioned about the collection. So if you're planning to give 10, make it 20. And if you're planning to give 20, make it 50. And if you're planning to give 50, make it 100. And if you're planning to give more than 100, give it to me. <laughs> you, you can see that uh, Father Mario is looking forward to being a pastor. <laughs> You will be getting a call from the bishop any minute. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's uh, we are all uh, uh, we are also thinking about how can we maintain our safety, especially our health condition right now. And this is why we also have phone calls. We are trying to reach out all our parishioners, also. And speaking of numbers, I have I have in here. You can also watch it on your screen. I call it a spiritual emergency numbers. So here we go. This is just a quick one. This might be uh, helpful for your uh, while you're staying at home. So when you are in sorrow, you have to read John chapter 14. And when you have sinned or committed sin, you have to read Psalm 51. And if you are worried of anything, you have to read Matthew 6, 19 to 34. And if you are in danger of anything, Psalm 91. Uh, you have to call Psalm 91. When your faith needs steering, Hebrews 11. And when you feel down and out, 
Romans 8.31 And if you want peace and rest, Matthew 11.25 and 30. Deacon Jan, would you mind to continue reading number 8? When the world seems bigger than God, call Psalm 90. If your pockets are empty, call Psalm 37. And you may want to call Father Mario if somebody brings in more than 100. <laughs> Uh, when you are lonely and fearful, call Psalm 23. When you grow bitter and critical, call 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And for how to get along with other men and women, call Romans 12. If you are depressed, call Psalm 27. And if people seem unkind, call John 15. That's right. And in addition to what Father Paul is saying earlier, common sense. So when it's raining, it's up to you. You want to go outside and bring an umbrella or better stay at home. And with its sunny day, you may enjoy sunbathing or may just go to a swimming pool. So it's up to you. So it's just a matter of common sense. And maybe Father Paul can also make some additional trivia or advice during this time. I'm going to get a religious yeah. Just a brief announcement about faith formation. We will be, our, our secretary is going to be back on, um, back at the parish. We're so happy, happy about that. We will be sending out registration mm -hmm. forms for next year. And also, I know that First Communion people are concerned. Uh, as soon as we kind of figure things out on our end, we'll put information out to you. So we, it is on top of our list, but we haven't come to it as yet. So Faith Formation is, um, will be coming alive again. Uh, confirmation candidates will be, uh, uh, we will give you your first assignment this week. Uh, so stay tuned to your email. And before we get back to Father Paul, there's a, we have another question. A couple more questions. Um, can I receive Eucharist at weekday Mass? Y yes. Yes. And another question from someone else. Will the priest be wearing a mask during communion distribution? I guess, yes. I think we all are. Everyone distributing communion will be wearing a mask. Okay. And uh, actually, I, uh, I got a call the other day. People are wondering, and we, we haven't talked about this yet, but when can we start uh, baptismal catechesis again, and when do you think baptisms will be starting again? I know I hit you on the spot. No, you didn't. <laughs> um, baptisms. If you are interested in having your son or daughter baptized, call us at the rectory and we'll talk about it. They are possible. At this point, the number of people would be limited, but perhaps as the weeks unfold, if the number of folks being able to be present uh, is increasing, well, then maybe the family could too. For now, we would not be doing baptisms ever during Mass, but we would be doing them. So please call us at the rectory and let us know, and we'll talk about that uh, on an individual basis. Um, I think that answers that question. Mm -hmm. yes. As far as the, the classes go, I think we would probably be able to restore those on the first Monday of each month. Uh, just let us know that you're interested, and uh, I think we can space that enough that those classes can take place. Okay, good. And uh, just to conclude, I, uh, Sister did not mention this, but we are making the phone calls, as uh, some of you have received, others of you will be receiving from fellow parishioners. We hope uh, that you would be generous in accepting that call. If you don't recognize the number, they leave a message, uh, they may call you back, or could you call them? This is helpful for us to know who's who here, and um, it's amazing the number of phone numbers that are coming back as no longer in existence, or we don't know where that is. This is a wonderful way for us to kind of continue to look at St. Mary's community, where we are, and who's a member, and who's not, and who's joined, and who we don't know about. So all of that, I think, yeah, yeah. and Sister has been doing an excellent job with uh, the phone, uh, phoners who are doing that. So yeah, please awesome. be kind to them. And if worse comes to worse, call me. I might not be so kind, but I certainly <laughs> will uh, be able to talk to you. Yeah, the reason we're calling, too, is to find out how you're doing during this difficult time where you're stuck at home. So we want to make sure everybody uh, has everything they need and that if there's anything we can do for you. 
Again, thank you for being with us uh, this week, and we hope that this is a, a good week for all of you.